of the things I despise most is laundry. Anybody else with me? Let me ask you, are these clothes in this laundry basket clean or dirty? This is such a good question, isn't it? And the best way to answer it, the old sniff test. And these are clean. Now, I would venture to guess that many of us have at least one laundry basket like that in our house right now. And if you do, you might be experiencing some guilt about it. Now, why would we feel guilt about having a laundry basket full of clothes lying around the house? Well, here's what a normal laundry cycle might look like. You wash your clothes, you dry your clothes, you fold your clothes, you put them away and you repeat. And some of us can maintain this perfect cycle, but most of us can't. Here's what a more realistic cycle might look like. You wash and dry the laundry, you leave it in the laundry basket, you repeat for five days, finally put the laundry away, and then vow to always keep on top of it in the future. And then you rinse and repeat. Am I right? We have six people in our house and all of us have dirty clothes hampers. We have a dresser, we have a closet. And yet at any given time in our house, at least one of us has a laundry hamper full of clean clothes and a pile of dirty clothes sitting on the floor next to it. And let's not talk about the common bedtime ritual of swiping your pile of clean clothes that you dumped on your bed onto the floor. You took a vow to put them away three days ago, but they continue to be transported between the bed and the floor each morning and each evening. Laundry is actually never done. And I don't know about you, but something left undone makes me feel like a failure. Let me show you a short clip that I saw on Instagram that might free you from the pressure that your unfinished laundry might be placing on your shoulders. Check this out. I'm probably not the only person that looks at a pile of laundry and I see it as evidence. There's something wrong with me that I can't get the laundry done. We're used to going, is the laundry done or is it not done? Oh, your laundry exists in a cycle. You have clothes that are clean in the closet. You have clothes that are on your body. You have clothes that are dirty on the floor. You have clothes that are dirty in the hamper. You have clothes that are dirty waiting to go in the wash. You have some in the wash. You have some there. That's a cycle. It's okay for any of it to be in that cycle. And you are not morally obligated to line up every care cycle in your home at the done state at the same time. The key is how do I learn to turn all of these cycles at a pace where it's functional. This is life-changing stuff. If laundry is a cycle, then it's not about completing the cycle, but instead it's about continuing to move through the cycle without guilt or shame associated with where you are in the cycle. And that is freeing. Now cycles, which are really the same as rhythms, are never done. They're always in motion and can be in any given part of the cycle. We live in the midst of all kinds of rhythms from the smallest to the biggest of things. We're currently in the middle of a series where we're looking at rhythmic practices that remind us of the grace of God. And these are what we are calling rhythms of grace. Now, when it comes to grace, there's always a temptation for us to forget that through Jesus, we've received unearned favor from God, and that is grace. And because we tend to forget what God has gifted us, we need rhythms that, that help us remember. And one of the ways we remember is through the practice of Lent. Now, Lent is a, a time of year leading up to Easter when we are invited to intentionally set aside time to connect with God through several rhythms or cycles. Last week, we looked at the rhythm of fasting. We looked at the power of renewal. And this week, we'll explore the rhythm of prayer, which is an essential part of our relationship with God. Now, prayer can feel like a moment rather than a rhythm. It might seem like prayer is a meeting that happens on a specific day at a specific time. Prayer could be something that happens at church before taking communion or a short moment before eating together. You might think of praying when you desperately need something or you find yourself fearful of the future. And, and these are great times to pray. But prayer is much more than just a simple moment. It's meant to be a rhythm that we revisit often. 
Now, a rhythm or a cycle that continues to spin is, is really what prayer is. We're not intended to complete prayer, but, but to live within prayer. And we actually, we see Jesus pray all the time. And those who heard him pr- pray, they, they wanted to learn more about Jesus' approach to prayer. They asked him, in fact, how to pray, and he gives them an example. Look at Luke chapter 11, verse 1. It says that one day Jesus was praying in a certain place. And when he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples. And in response, Jesus said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone who sins against us and lead us not into temptation. And, and I love this. I love the question, actually. The disciples seem to be asking a question many of us ask. How do we pray? What do we say when we pray? What we often really want to know is how do we pray the right way. I don't want to mess this thing up. I don't want to say the wrong thing or, or ask the wrong question. And Jesus gives them, and in turn gives us, a rhythm to pray through. It's really a, a, a never-ending cycle of praise, petition, repentance, and request. A, a rhythm that doesn't come to an end, but ends right back where it began. Prayer isn't only a moment to set aside. It's a, it's a cycle to keep spinning. Like living amid the laundry cycle. What if we lived amid prayer? Rather than trying to complete prayer, what if we looked for the next opportunity to be moved along the cycle of prayer? And here's the rhythm of of prayer that we find Jesus teaching. This is a rhythm of prayer. We can find ourselves at any point in this rhythm. We can find ourselves at the point of, of praise where we're thanking God and we're glorifying him or, or prayers of surrender where we're giving over control and, and releasing our grip on life. We might find ourselves in a prayer where we're requesting or asking God for what we need or we're sharing the desires of our heart and asking for healing and, and for hope and for provision. We find ourselves in the rhythm of prayer in the the place of repentance where we're confessing and we're repenting more on that later in the series. Or we find ourselves forgiving, canceling the debts of others, trusting God with, with justice and with righteousness, asking God for protection to protect us from others and from this world and even from ourselves. This is the rhythm of prayer. And it's not so much something to complete as it is a cycle to continue moving through as we pray. And we might be able to pray and work through this cycle two or three times over in in one sitting. And maybe the next time we sit down to pray and, and we'll barely get through one before a child sneaks out of their room or the phone starts to ring. The beautiful thing about a cycle like this though, is that we get to fully exist wherever we find ourselves within this rhythm because rhythms permit us to exist at any point. The most important part of a rhythm is actually to return to it whenever we lose traction. Now, through Lent, you you might have committed to fast. And when we fast, we feel the absence of food or sugar or screens or the dopamine hits that we get from social media. Whatever we're fasting from reminds us that something we're used to is missing. And those hunger pangs serve as a reminder to return. A reminder to turn back to the rhythm of prayer, to praise, to surrender, to request to repent and, and to forgive. And sometimes when I'm sitting to pray, I, I find myself more distracted than any other time of day. My mind drifts off. I run down mental rabbit trails filled with to-do lists and meeting notes and questions of my own existence. And these often just feel like disruptions to the rhythm of prayer. But they only feel like that until we realize that every distraction or disruption is actually an opportunity. Pastor Rich Viotis in 
New York writes this about distracted prayers. He says, if your mind gets distracted a thousand times in 10 minutes of prayer, it's 1,000 opportunities to come back to the loving presence of Jesus. Rhythms permit us to return rather than shame us for leaving. Now, Jesus actually teaches on prayer several times in his ministry. As we just kind of wrap up and ask ourselves, what does rhythm, a rhythm of prayer look like in our lives? I want to point out what Jesus says in Matthew chapter six. In verse five, Jesus says, and when you pray, which assumes that we're praying, do not be like the hypocrites for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. The reward they've, they've already received is the recognition of others. That's as far as their prayers will get them. Praying publicly for all to hear might gain you the ear and eyes of others, but it does nothing to connect you with your heavenly father. So Jesus goes on to say this, but when you pray, go into your room, close the door and pray to your father who is unseen. Then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Prayer in private to our heavenly father reaps a reward from our father in heaven. This doesn't mean that we get whatever we want, but it means we receive what the Lord has for us. See, prayer isn't, isn't a moment to show off in front of others. It's a, it's a rhythm to align our hearts with God and to receive the reward he has for us, which is grace. Grace is unearned favor. We didn't earn it, which means we can't unearn it either. In fact, it's a gift and it's one we often forget or fail to believe is real. Prayer is a reminder of God's grace. It's where we can encounter his grace for real, which means that a rhythm of prayer is a rhythm of grace. And oh, do we need to receive God's gift of grace? So we pray to our father in heaven. We pray alone and we pray in silence. We pray with family and friends, with our home community group and with our church. We intentionally take time to turn our hearts toward our father in heaven. We take time to praise him. We take time to express our gratitude. We go through the rhythm of surrendering our will to his will. We do it out loud. We bring all of our requests to him with our whole heart. We repent of our sin and we forgive those who have sinned against us. And we ask that the grace of God would protect and provide for us in ways that only God can. As we practice the rhythms of prayer taught to us by Jesus, we will encounter the presence of God and the reality of his grace. So may we, may we be people who, who live within the rhythm of prayer, those who pray continually, who with every distraction are reminded to return to God and in prayer receive the fullness of his grace and his truth. So let's pray and receive his grace. Lord Jesus, we come before you in prayer. God, in praise and repentance. God, asking for protection, bringing our whole hearts before you, laying it at your feet, saying, Lord, your will be done. Not my will, but your will. God, we lay down our lives for the one who laid his down for us. And God, I ask that as we come before you, as we exist in the rhythm of prayer, as we intentionally spend time with you, Lord, I ask that you would reveal your grace, your goodness, your truth, and your love to each of us. God, we love you. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, it's been so good having you join us online today. And I just want to say, if you have yet to join us at any one of our campuses, I want to invite you to come and attend one of the many opportunities that we have to gather in community, to be inspired to know, love, 
and follow Jesus. And in the meantime, if you have questions or you have prayer requests, make sure to click one of the links below so that we can get connected with you. We love you and we hope to see you soon.